Kaito Duo. The name alone might bring back some nostalgic memories of days spent in the computer lab doing who knows what. But now, core 2 duos are remnants of a bygone era, a time where dual cores were king and quad cores were still out of the reach of the everyday consumer. Well, now that it's been over a decade since the release of the 4 core 2 duo, their prices have dropped to almost pocket change and you can buy a core 2 quad Q6600 for the price of a meal. So how do they hold up today? Are they still as good as they were back in their prime, or have they aged so much that they can barely run the latest games? Well. Glad you asked. Man, has it been a long time since I used a Core 2 Duo. So to kick off this video, the Core 2 Duo that we will be testing today is the Core 2 Duo E8400, which fortunately supports Windows 10, but it's so incredibly slow that it's not worth using. Windows 7 is supported, and if you're willing to use an OS that isn't supported anymore, is vulnerable, and doesn't have as many features as Windows 10, then I would suggest that a Core 2 Duo is perfectly fine for what you want to do. But if you're looking to game on Windows 10, right off the bat, the Core 2 Quads will be a better option for you. So yeah, that's already a pretty tough pill to swallow. So spec-wise, the Core 2 Duo E8400 has two cores clocked at 3 GHz with 6 MB of L2 cache. Yeah, that's right. The CPU doesn't have L3 cache. In fact, none of the Core 2 models have L3 cache. On top of this, the model we're testing today has a frontside bus speed of 1333 MHz. Yeah, remember when that was a thing? On top of that, there isn't an integrated GPU in this either, which to some people might be a deal breaker. TDP for this chip isn't terrible, only drawing 65 watts, but more modern i-series chips draw a little bit more power, but they are much better performing. TLDR, performance per watt for this chip, or really any Core 2 chip, isn't that great. So getting onto their performance, I can tell you right off the bat that performance will be terrible. And I couldn't be farther from the truth. We didn't even bother recording the gameplay because it was so bad. Games like Doom bottlenecked the CPU so severely that when we tried booting into the first level, the game completely crashed and forced a system-wide restart. However, older games, specifically Call of Duty World at War, ran excellently, locking at 91 FPS the entire time. Battlefield 4 also performed surprisingly well too, averaging at 42 FPS, but the minimums were pretty rough and there was some pretty severe stuttering. The Blender BMW render scene took just under an hour to fully render at 4K, when a mid-range i3-8100 can do so in about 15 minutes. So, in conclusion, are the Core 2 Duo chips worth gaming on? Well, I think the answer is pretty clear. The Core 2 Duo chips were once king of the hill and offered enthusiasts and gamers alike excellent performance at an excellent price. But those times are now long gone. After 10 years, it's actually still quite impressive what these CPUs can do, provided that you aren't using it for resource-hungry programs. So, are the Core 2 Duos worth buying in 2018? Unfortunately, and with a heavy heart, we have to say no. Buying a Core 2 Duo and even a Core 2 Quad has been kind of pointless for a few years now. Cheaper and older i5, such as the i5-750, have been available for around 30 bucks since 2016, and that CPU will blow older quad-core chips out of the water. Older i3s will also perform very well for the price, and those can be found for even cheaper. So then, are Core 2 Duos worth buying at all? Well, if you're looking to build a PC to play older games, then higher-end Core 2 Duos and quad-core processors should do the trick and provide decent results. But if you're looking to build a PC to play modern AAA games, then using any Core 2 model won't provide playable results. If you're looking for cheap processors that will provide good performance, then older i5s and newer Pentiums will perform excellently for the money. If you're building a PC for productivity and video editing, then older quad-core 8-thread Xeon should do the trick for the least amount of money. So, thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified about all their future uploads. And if you like what you saw, leave a like and tell us in the comments what you think of the Core 2 Duos. Do you agree with this video, and what are some memories that you've had with them? So, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.